Welcome to the Austin All Day Culinary Tales Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Powers, and this is episode 24. We are here with Chef Alicia Fishweiker, a culinary arts teacher at Dell Valley. This past week, we had Chef Michael Wake of the Funkadelic compete in Lux Magazine's Iron Chef Throwdown, and he took it home for the win. Kudos, Chef. Some things to look forward to, Spread & Co. with their beautiful cheese and charcuterie boards have pulled the trigger on a brick and mortar and Austin and Rosemary are in there on the daily grind busting their butts to get that place open. Look forward to that, support them on Instagram and check out their website. Also, let's look forward to the grand opening of Nixta. Chef Edgar Rico and Sarah Martin Biggie were on the podcast. I am very excited for that opening. It's supposed to happen in early July, so keep your eyes out for that. You guys go find us on Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube. Some things are happening there very soon, and support us on Patreon. You guys sit back, grab a drink, and check it out. Chef Alicia. That's me. Yes. Thank you for coming. <laughs> thank you for inviting me. Welcome to South Austin. Where are you about? I'm also in South Austin, okay. but not quite as far south. Um, I'm on like southeast near Old Torf area. Okay. Yeah. We dodged a storm, apparently. A little bit. I or mean, did I drove, you get stuck I drove it? through it a little bit. It wasn't that bad. People panic when it rains in Austin, so I feel like it they do. wasn't as bad as people made it out to be. Yes, yes, that's but true. It, the lightning was really pretty. And you said you were coming from work? It was. I left a little early. Shh. Okay. <laughs> and what uh, what currently are you up to? I am teaching culinary arts at Del Valley High School. Culinary arts. Just, so Del Valley. Where is the high school? Del Valley is just past the the uh, airport. Okay. So it's kind of it's like it seems like it's far away, but if you live in Southeast Austin, it's about fifteen minutes. Not too bad. So it's not bad. Yeah. It's just all the people that make it feel long. Yes. <laughs> So culinary arts. Yeah. Right. That's that's great. Yeah. And I think it's so I I got into the role. I'll kind of go I'm going to work backwards. Yeah. Into how I got into the role. Oh yeah, I'm interested. So cuz we used to work at Whole Foods together so we we and a number of other people who've been on here. Yeah. It's a very common theme the Whole Foods. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Whole Foods before it kind of got, it kinda, you know, it, it, it yeah. tornadoed a little. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, so, I, so yes, culinary teacher right now. I, this is my first full year. And last year I worked there, I started in February. Prior to that, I was working at Escoffier Culinary School. Okay. So this teaching thing you've been attracted to for a second. Yeah, I think so. I mean, well, the, the thought of educating people in culinary arts has always been important to me. I've always enjoyed like the training aspects of being in management and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. It's a life skill people need and, yeah. you know, worked in fine dining for a while, but got real tired of it. And yeah, so working backwards, I guess I was working at Escoffier yeah. and that, that school's fine, you know, I was, but I was doing like, like you were saying, you, you're on the road a lot. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, I was doing a like a recruiting type of thing. Okay. So like going around for Escafia. Like, yes. Oh, okay. So going around to like a bunch of different high schools and talking about the program and da da da. Okay. Okay. It was a lot more traveling than I had anticipated, so I kind of got a little burnt out with the traveling. And do you have to stick to the script when you do that kind of thing? No, it was kind of up to me. There were some things that I, you know, I had to talk about about the program, but it was up to me how I did the presentation. Yeah, what so it sort could of, be kind of fun, right? And it was fun. I did yeah. like like the actual presentations. Yeah. Being with the kids and doing the cooking was like the best part. And then I was like, well, why don't I just do that full right. time? <laughs> sure, sure. And I tried to see if I could get a job as a culinary teacher at Escoffier, but didn't seem like it was working out, so I applied at a high school, and that's how I got it. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So sure you said some fine dining. So maybe, where are you? you from Texas? No. I'm from the Bronx. Okay. In New York. All right. And born and raised son. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I went to UMass Amherst for my undergraduate and got a, a bachelor's in hospitality and tourism management, and after that... Um, Went to CIA, Culinary Institute of America, in upstate New York. Okay. And 
I really liked it there. I had a really good time. I was very successful at the school, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to do the fine dining thing. I think I'm good at it. Sure. And I was pretty good at it, but... Um, and I worked at, you know, Michelin rated places and stuff like that. And so you've had quite a, quite a past yeah, leading yeah. To, to culinary instructor here yes. at Dell. Um, yeah. curious when you were in New York, we just had a guy on here from, from New York. He's opening a trailer called uh, Brooklyn breakfast shop. Okay. Uh, very soon. So keep an eye out for that. You might like it. Right from New York, yeah. he's trying to bring the breakfast. Breakfast sandwiches are lacking in Austin. There you go. That's that's <laughs> his whole thing. Um, what were you? What got you into the whole culinary arts to begin with? From probably from when I was just a little kid. I think it started. Mom, dad, cooking. Um, uh, not quite. I mean, like they didn't cook that much. They cooked, but nothing too fancy. They did their role. Right? Yeah, they yeah. they fed us, and yeah. <laughs> you know they. I think what what was interesting is we went out to eat a lot. Okay. And which not, is nice, right? Yeah, which was yeah. nice. I mean, not out to eat at like, you know, like Michelin restaurants when I was like six years old. Applebee's. We, yeah. <laughs> chilies. Yeah. We just went to like neighborhood restaurants. Sure, and we're from sure. New York City. So there's a lot of good stuff Very around, good even stuff. if, and, you know, affordable, good food. Yeah. And we went around to a lot of different restaurants, a lot of different ethnic restaurants. And I think that's where I kind of was like, this is fucking awesome. Yeah. Like, you can. You know, like these people are running these restaurants, and that's cool. And I think I want to do that. And yeah, was it the kind of like when you were the experience, or did you actually peer into the kitchen and say, "What are they doing?" So I mean, part of it was uh, like helping my parents out with cooking and stuff like that, and yeah. just being active in the the feeding the family. Sure. Part, and then I was like, "Well, they're doing this in a restaurant. How is that any different than doing it at home?" All right. They're just doing it and getting like paid for this and they're and it looks like they're enjoying themselves and stuff yeah. so was the first job with uh, a restaurant my first job was yeah was in nice. college my freshman year i was working at like a burrito place oh yeah yeah you can still roll them like a pro oh yeah i'm sure oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> um and that was really cool because it was a lot of the I, I i was in college and it was a bunch of I was the only college kid who was actually working in the kitchen. Yeah. All the other kids were, the like, college kids were in the front of house serving or doing, like, dishes or something. But I was the only kid who was in the kitchen, and I was like, I'm cool. I'm cool. <laughs> the cool kid, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you were kind of attracted to that, the back of the house kind of yeah, the yeah. way it is back there? Mm-hmm. You know? Well, and that place was a really interesting start because a lot of the people in the kitchen were, it was a bunch of women from Honduras. Oh. And So did you learn any? Spanish, yeah? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've always been, like, you know, kitchen Spanish. Like, yeah. I've never, I wish I spoke fluently, but I yeah, don't. Yeah, me too, right? And I, especially where I'm teaching now, yeah. everyone, like, the majority of the students speak Spanish. It'd be really helpful if I spoke Spanish. Yeah, but, yeah. Do you try? Or like, I mean. To put forth a real effort, or you just kind of go, I, I kind of got this. <laughs> don't I don't put forth enough effort. Right, I think yeah. <laughs> I could definitely put forth more effort, but it's really hard to learn a language as an adult. And Yeah. No, I don't know. I just. I haven't made time for it. But definitely, you know, in a kitchen, you learn how to get by with somebody who only yeah. speaks Spanish. Yes, yeah. If you I want can... to call it Spanglish, Spanglish right, kitchen right. Spanish, whatever it is. Yes. I worked with uh, Yovana. I don't know if you remember Yovana at all. She was downtown at Lamar at a Whole Foods, and she never spoke a word of English. And I worked I with her I every day, every every single day. But it's possible. Yeah. And the whole time I was like, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know exactly what's yeah. happening here. Yes. No sé. Then you're like, you fucking know. Yeah. <laughs> you no know. <laughs> only, only when it comes to cleaning, huh? Right, right. <laughs> Suddenly you'll catch them and we'll be like, see? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So New York, you you're kind of get the, the, the fire for it. Yeah. So as a kid, it was like, oh, this is pretty interesting. And then I, I uh, you know, high school came around. I was very interested in, in uh, environmental sciences and in environmentalism and okay. activism and stuff like that. That definitely plays a role. In yeah. Today, I mean, yeah. the two are kind of hand in hand. Yeah. You can't really be involved in food in any sort of holistic, meaningful way without caring about the environment. <laughs> yeah. And, and Austin's like a great place to land for that. Right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I don't mean to jump around, but at no, the school, fine. do you guys like compost and is that a focus or is it not? So we don't have a compost for the school. 
Yeah. Um, which is lame, but and it I, is. Yeah, it's really lame. And I think that that's in their like five year plan. Sure. For the whole district. But you're kind of teaching the awareness of. Yeah, I'm te- like what it is and how it works. That's, yeah, that's definitely part of just teaching culinary arts, yeah. right? Not to waste. And, yes. Yes, you know, absolutely. I go things. through the trash. That's one of the first things I tell them is like, I'm gonna look through the trash. Okay. Like. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I mean the school recycles, but sure. it's there's definitely there could there could be much more of an initiative. I think it's just hard to get an entire school board on board with that. It costs money and time yeah. and yeah. Da, da. oh yeah, when you gotta but, ask a bunch of people for approval, but it they goes, really should do it though. I mean, <laughs> I agree, I agree, and we'll, hopefully we'll see it soon. Yeah, but yeah. you know, back to New York. Mm-hmm. Um, what, so what you know, what got you from the burrito place into like maybe thinking this is something you're gonna do? So after the burrito place, I worked in the university club, okay. and that was like the hoity-toity fancy place okay. for the that like all the the rich board members of the university went to for lunch and stuff. Oh, it's a good practice. Yes, yeah, fancy place. Yeah, and I worked in the kitchen there, and I was also again like one of the only students in the back. And I really loved it. I had a good time. Actually, funny story about that place. Two of my worst kitchen times that were there. Okay. One was when to I... To date. To date. Ooh, to date. <laughs> I don't know why they didn't fire me. <laughs> I would have fired my ass real, real fast. <laughs> well, what happened? Um, the first one was when I... Uh, so I was working fryer, and we had those little, uh, like paper basket things that, that you we would like toss things in or just like stage it whatever and the it was very busy and I was very disorganized because I didn't know what I was doing and I and underneath so there's like the burners right next to the fryer right which is poor design yeah but <laughs> yeah but you know, there was like a little like a thin table in between where we to- kept some bowls and stuff whatever okay. But it was still, anyway. So I dropped one of the paper plates that was covered in grease. In the fryer? N- no, in, onto the left side, which was the burners. Which started a fire. Which started a fire. A small fire. A small fire. Okay. That <laughs> turned into a larger fire. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> and um, that required a fire extinguisher. And Good Lord. <laughs> and service got called off, oh, I'm yeah. sure. Oh, God. We were, we were out for like a few hours. And... That's pretty um, bad. Yeah, yeah. I, that was pretty bad. I was crying. I was very, <laughs> I was very. Upset. What, how old were you then? I was uh, like nineteen. Okay, <laughs> that's that's a record. That's a good. Yep. Yeah. Well, um, that, then you have had it pretty good, right? Yeah. Well, that's the worst thing. <laughs> the fryer setting out the almost setting out fire, and then the uh, the other one was the one I put salt instead of sugar in a huge batch, like a giant Hobart mixer batch of oh. macadamia. <laughs> Pancake mix. Oh, I've done that. <laughs> uh, Macadamias are expensive. Yeah, yeah. You got to learn the hard way, yes, right? Did that, yeah. That's not the same place. Same place. Oh, same you, place. Mother's it, Day brunch. It, and you left there on good terms. <laughs> yep, they liked me. <laughs> I was. Hey, it's, a I, cause salty I think it's because I pancakes today. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's because you know, like I owned the mistake and I tried to fix it. Yeah, yeah. I was, well, that goes yeah, a long way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Covered up. I don't know. It must have been Jill. I don't yeah, know. <laughs> not me. Yeah, yeah, but that's yeah. There you go. We we've actually that's actually come up on here. Like actually, sugar instead of salt, and the other way yeah. around. Pancakes. It's if com- it's your kid, it's okay. Error. If you're paying for it, no good. No, no it's good. common error. So you're 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 there. Uh huh. And then what happens after that? Okay, after that. Um, I stayed at the university club, and then I and I I worked at a place called Earth Foods. Did you know that you were going to stay in foods? I kind of thought I was at that point because I had chosen hospitality as my major. And you've got you've said a couple of times that you get into the back of the house. You're one of the only people there. It's yeah. kind of like hey, I was like I'm in. Yeah. I like it. This okay. is where I belong. Okay. I think I knew at that point that I was going to pursue that as my career. Oh, well, cool. Yeah. Um, and what's Earth Foods? That so, sounds kind of like. Maybe what led you to maybe a whole food yeah, scenario. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so Earth Foods was pretty pretty formative in my culinary 
life. This, this is in New York, yeah. This is in Massachusetts. Massachusetts, where, yeah. okay. Yeah. So Earth Foods it is a uh, vegetarian, cooperatively run student business. Oh, so okay. It was entirely student run. So it's a it's a restaurant. Yeah, a restaurant that was located. Grocery store at all? Um, not a grocery store, but okay. um, just yeah, just a restaurant. Yeah. Um, kind of cafeteria style, but has a lot you know a handful of different options every day, and everything's vegetarian. And there was a big agriculture program at the school, so a lot of the stuff that we were getting was from students growing it. Cool. And neighborhood farms and whatnot. Yeah. So that was like a real super, super hippie, like <laughs> real crunchy type of place. And I sure. I really, really loved it. And yeah. I was just like, you know, why why is this not happening everywhere? Yeah, so yeah. I, I still have friends. Who, yeah, all the hippie there. kind of stereotypes aside, it's super cool like to have that happening and like people growing yeah. things, bring them in, mm-hmm. bringing them in and using and them. And students and completely student run. Yeah, so that opened your eyes a little. Yeah, too. that I was like, because at that point I was like, man, running a restaurant seems like a lot of work. I don't yeah. think I want to do that. Okay, that's <laughs> For smart. a little while, I was just kind of like, sure. I don't know if I actually want to do that, but I want to do food in some way. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like, oh, okay. Like, stu- student-run business. I mean, I, they were some of the, I hung out with those people all the time. That was my first real glimpse into, like, that kind of typical, you know, camaraderie that you find in kitchens. Sure. That was the first time I had that because all the other places I was the only kid working there. Okay, you were doing it solo. Yeah, there were. I mean, there were you know mostly like twenty five, twenty five plus crowd, and yeah. I was like nineteen, so I was like the little kid. Sure. So now everyone was you know the same age in college, and we're all running a business together, and we're all passionate about the environment and vegetarianism. And at the time, I was vegetarian. I, I, sure. I was vegetarian for nine years. So nine years. Yeah. Okay. Not during culinary school, or yes. Culinary school was the turning point. Okay. Yeah, that's when <laughs> a chef slaps you on the hand and says, "Eat that." Yeah. Well, I had decided before I went. Okay. I was like, you know, smart I, choice. I'm going to culinary school. All right. Think I'm gonna have to start trying some meat at least. Right. Right. And I'm sure you don't regret that decision. <laughs> I don't, but you know, I do try to eat like mostly yeah. vegetarian because. Yeah. yeah. I, when I, you know, back when I, when we were at Whole Foods, I was a vegetarian for the longest time. Yeah. I kind of remember talking to you about that. Longest yeah. time. And I, yeah. I recently, not even a year now, mm-hmm. made a, made a switch to kind of convert back to the, the carne. How do you feel about it? Uh, good. Good. It actually opens up a world of options mm-hmm. that I didn't realize that I didn't have. I mean, yeah. I just didn't pay attention to it. Right. I was like, no, oh, the veggie burger or the veggie taco. What, what, mm-hmm. What's the options? Yeah. Now it's like, you know, El Pastor, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. It's like, okay, I'll try that. I'll try that. It's like, oh, it's. I keep the Aladdin th- song, a whole new <laughs> <laughs> plays in my head every time I go to a menu. I'm like, wow. Yeah. So it's good. Yeah. And I feel like you can have meat. As like a sprinkle, like you don't need. You don't need. Like, I mean, I lived for years like that without it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you. I mean, I, every now and then I like a good fat steak, but like. Like a ribeye or something. Yeah, yeah, juicy yeah. steak. This guy go all out. With, <laughs> yeah. Like a half a pound of butter yeah, just and garlic. Smack it on, you know. Yeah. Oh yes. But yeah. Every now and then that's delicious, but mostly it's just a sprinkle. Yeah. 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 No, that's so. Vegetarian, yeah. I mean, that's a great place for it too, because I'm sure you would have been kicked out of the club real quick if mm-hmm. you were you were you know you know eating uh, Big Macs while yes. going to, <laughs> Earth to foods, yeah. yeah yeah. But it was a good experience. It was an what amazing about the experience. Farming or, or gardening. The people you people were bringing in things they were growing. Did you get to like get introduced to that there? Yeah. So I um, I did part of. I had like a lot of extra credits that I could just take. So I took a class uh, about urban farming. Oh, nice. And I I was kind of going in the path of getting a minor in sustainable sustainable agriculture. Yeah. But but you had to take like a lot of chemistry and like organic chemistry and a lot of science-y shit that I wasn't interested in. So I was like, whatever, I'll just take a few courses because I have some time in my schedule and I'm interested in this. So Sure. Part of that was was through the agriculture program, and that's how I kind of had my hands. I, I didn't. There were people who did that like as their full classes, right. and they, there was like a full farm that the school ran. But I just kind of was like peripherally involved in that. Do you, do you currently garden? 
No, I'm not good at it. Oh, you don't have the green thumb? <laughs> I don't. I, I like if someone already has a garden set up or a farm or something, and they can and they just like tell me what to do, I'll do it, no right. problem. Right, right. But I can't. I, anytime I seem to plant things, I've tried squash and you know tomatoes and herbs and even succulents. I kill. I kill everything. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, really it's not hard good to kill plants. succulents. Yeah, I've killed them all. Well, that's horrible. But <laughs> so I stopped. But I you stopped can cook them. That. You can cook them. Okay. Yes, I can cook them. I can't grow them. So you um, you end up at culinary school, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, which is uh, excellent in New York, yep, right? Back, CIA, yeah. CIA, you were required to have some experience in a kitchen. Prior. Yes, I think I I feel like their requirements have changed since I've been there. I think they've gotten more lax. Right? I think so, which is yeah. unfortunate. It's unfortunate, but that's a very good school to yeah. have attended. We've talked to a lot of guys. No, not discrediting it. Anybody who's gone to La Cordon yeah. Bleu here in Austin, but I'm so surprised. How many people went to Le Cordon Bleu who are, you know, out and about in Austin, mm-hmm. you know, but CIA, we've talked to a couple of people from CIA, but yeah, that's a great school to be involved with. Yeah, it was. It was a really good school and it, it was a uh, very well funded programs. And like, and now that I've seen like other culinary schools, I'm like, oh, wow. Like that was a, that was a really impressive yeah. program that they had. Very so you, you took a lot from it. Yeah, I think so. I mean. That was also my first exposure to the brigade system and the whole, like, you know, like, militant structure, which I am not a fan of. You're not? No. And why not? Because I don't like authority and I don't like the military and I don't like... I mean, I I respect the military, but... (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Right. Yes, of course. Right. But most people listening would know this, but the brigade is we have, you know, from, I guess you could start from the very bottom and you work your way all the way up to the executive chef Mm -hmm. and down from there is your sous chef and your chef. Right. The hierarchy of roles. And all the way down to what is the formal bottom of the brigade? The formal bottom. Dishwasher, is it? (laughs) (laughs) I believe it's, I think it is a chef de partie, which would be a line cook. Okay. All right. I don't think they have like a prep cook on the, the, you know, like formal list yeah so from the get-go when you saw that you just didn't jive with you i mean i understand it it makes sense but makes i think sense. that and i don't and i think that you know like it it function it, it can have a function sure but i think that enforcing it in such a you know uh like a, a like a like a fascist manner sure yeah. is like detrimental to the industry and you've always felt that oh always it's not something that came to you later no i've always been like this is this is silly outdated a it's little it's just silly <laughs> <laughs> like, like uh, uh, i mean i think it's important to have goals and to you know like right. be like i want to be like in charge one day mm-hmm. but like being in charge doesn't mean you're an asshole yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and because it's a it's a French uh, thing, I mean, it gets mm-hmm. that kind of rap. Um, and we see the brigade as far as, um, you know, titles. Mm-hmm. I don't know if the brigade is in place like in Austin the way, it, you know, you'd think of it. Right. Typically. I mean, I think it's slowly do, getting done away with, and I think that's fine. I mean, it doesn't need to be so, so stringent and so... Uh, I don't, you know, like uptight. It's it feels uptight to me. So, <laughs> bouncing around a little <laughs> when you're teaching your students, is that a a clear opinion that you share with them, or do you just kind of teach? Because you you're teaching the brigade, right? right? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, you know, they they know what it is, and they know the the system. They, they then, also know their 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 chef doesn't and like <laughs> doesn't fully engage with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll it's. It, it's my role, in my opinion, to tell them what it is, how it exists, how it can be successful, and how it cannot be successful. And then you end with the under your breath, like, it's an outdated system. Let's, <laughs> let's move on to the next thing. <laughs> no, I mean, I think I think in when you're first coming into a kitchen, I think it is a very handy thing to understand. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're first coming in. Well, because you can kind of also... S- you can, you can identify who's your boss. Who do you report to? Identify who's your boss. Identify maybe what's next for you. Yeah, pay, what for your you. goals are. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, but I think that that could, doesn't have to be so. It can be a little looser. Yeah, yeah. And it will never get old to say 
when you're discussing a brigade and like somebody at the top of the ladder, without the person at the very bottom of the totem pole, the dishwasher, if he's not there that day right. or he or she, uh, it's not going to be a very fun night for anybody. Mm-hmm. It's It starts there, and that's kind of the backbone, where people think it's typically reversed. If chef's not here tonight, you know, we're not going to... And typically, right. you know, the you'll ship can fine. sail just fine. <laughs> yeah. right? You just step into the dish pit for a couple hours, right. and you'll understand the, the difference there. <laughs> exactly. And also, typically, those guys are awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's funny. I, I, I'm sure you can remember the majority of dishwashers you've had working for you. Yeah. <laughs> They're always pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I've always had good, that's an, an you got to have a good relationship with the people who wash your plates and your equipment. Very, very true. <laughs> very true. So back to CIA. Yes. How the experience was good. And, and yeah. in, in retrospect, it was very good for yes. you. What, um, they have an extern internship yeah, style. They did a externship. I think it was like nine months or something like that. And that was remember. in New York. You did. Yeah, you you could do it wherever you want. Really, you but had, yours was in New York. Yes, I'm I did assuming. it in yeah. New York at the Modern, um, at the Museum of Modern Art. Is that fine dining? Yes, very fine dining, Michelin, um, Michelin okay. type of stuff. Nice. Um, I think they had two stars at the time. Very cool. And that was pretty. That was pretty fun. Yeah. Very tiring. Sure. Um, you know, I work like back to back doubles sometimes. Yeah. And it was like I was sleeping on my sister's couch a little bit here and there, and staying at my parents' house. I didn't. I didn't have my own apartment. I was because I was just doing the externship. So, and my parents lived in the city, and so did my sister. Externship equals no pay. No, I was getting paid. Okay, just but not I didn't. Uh, just, well, I also I didn't see the need to get an apartment. If I was only going to be there for nine months and then have to go back to school again. Okay. Um, especially when my sister was in. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, like Upper West Side and my parents were in the Bronx. So, you know, I stayed with them, kind of bouncing around. But honestly, I was just like basically working and sleeping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and what? And drinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good mix. Yeah. That's, that, that, that there makes it all yes. functional. <laughs> um, so how was that working there? And I mean, now you're here, and we have we have no Michelin star restaurants here in Austin. None. Nothing. None. And I guess, what are your thoughts on that? My thoughts on that. Um, have you thought about that? I have thought about that. Okay. And I read some article not too long ago that there there was a they're trying to get Michelin to come out here, mm-hmm. and I don't think they will. Okay, We're, it's not big enough. But it's is it a fact, or is it a matter of it's not out here because it's not big enough or there's nothing too exciting to see? Um, little of both. I think, I mean, I think there's fantastic food in Austin. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Really, really delicious food. Wouldn't have started the podcast if there wasn't. Right. <laughs> right. right. There, there definitely is. Um, but I don't know if a lot of it is that, is that level yeah. and that's not a bad thing. Yeah. yeah. That's just a different culture. So, and, oh, hi puppy. <laughs> I told you he's nosy, <laughs> Mr. Finn, the mascot. Um, but when you come from a place like New York, where that's—I don't know if it's commonplace, but you'll find it. And you come here, is it a load off your back, or is it um, a little leave bit. something to be desired? Um, when I first got here, I was kind of a little bit relieved because my because I came here basically with the intent of like managing restaurants. And I was like, you know, my background right now is in fine dining, and I'm I was actually I was pretty good at it, and I thought that's what I wanted to pursue, and I enjoy the art. I really enjoyed the artistry of the food, and that's why I had done the modern as my externship because it was at the Museum of Modern Art, and their plating is exquisite. Um, so I was kind of like, oh, maybe I'll work somewhere where I can be like really playful with my food or something. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of looked around when I was deciding to move to Austin, I was like, oh, there, there's really not like a whole lot of that going on with that like ridiculous, fancy, over-the-top plating, right? which I like. I think it's hilarious and fun. <laughs> but, to, to do that. Yeah, well, yeah. I think it's so fun. Yeah. I mean, food it's beautiful. And I, I want to cut back, but what, what you said, you're coming to Austin, but why? Why? Where, where did that come from? So that came from... Oh, it's okay. Um, <laughs> that came from... A bunch of my friends from UMass okay. had moved here Oh, after graduating. And then, I, and when I was in culinary school, um, I was kind of like, all right, what's my next move? 
And I was like, am I going to live in the city? Is that, is that like feasible for me if I'm going to be making like $12 an hour? <laughs> like, or, you know, at the time that was like the going rate, 12 to 14 oh, yeah. an hour for York like a is, line cook. Yeah. Super expensive. Yeah. And I was like, that's basically impossible. I'd have to live inside of a shoebox with 12 people. Yeah. I mean, and Austin is also expensive, but it's nowhere near, nowhere the, near the, as expensive, but anybody just, you know, starting on a line somewhere. Right. Is, You're gonna, uh, it's going to be a struggle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no doubt. You got to right. know that. Yeah. And I knew that. And I was just kind of like, nah, maybe I'll come back when I can be in a, a better role. Right. Right. And so your friends were here. I had a couple of friends had moved here. Yeah. And what, uh, when was that? Were they ranting and raving about anything cool here that was attracting you or you I just kind of your friends? They were all like crunchy people yeah. and kind of just like moved here, excuse me, on like a whim a little bit. Sure. And it's like moving to California in the sixties. Yeah, a little bit, I guess. Yeah. yeah, this was like eight years ago. Okay, so yeah. a little like just before shit started getting crazy with the developing. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not saying like, oh, like I was here before that, but like I it, I got here crazy. as that was happening. Yeah, yeah, and, and which it, I'm you know I recognize that I'm part of it as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, me too. Yeah, no, yeah, hundred percent. Most people here are right. So it's not so the so that was like eight years ago. They moved here, and I came to visit. Mm -hmm. Um, during South by Southwest, right, and which I didn't even know was a thing. I just happened to be here during South by Southwest. Oh, wow. yeah, and you're like, this place is incredible. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, this is amazing. Yeah. Is that was that your impression of Boston? <laughs> yeah, oh, I was God. just like, holy shit! <laughs> like, yeah. there's so much stuff to do. Live music. <laughs> yeah, there's so much stuff to do yes. all the time. <laughs> and I'm like, everything's that's, free. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Um, so I, yeah, I was like, this is great. And they're like, yeah, I mean, I knew I figured out obviously that it was right. a festival, <laughs> Obviously, yeah. but I was still like, this is still a really cool, cool place to live. And I had, you know, yes. a handful of places on my list. I was looking at like, uh, like Colorado and, oh, okay. you know, Actual like places. Yeah. I'm curious what kind of restaurants you started looking at. Yeah. So when I first got here, I moved here with no job, which was bold. Um, yeah. And nothing I, lined up. Nothing lined up. But you got something quick, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I knew I would. I'm a pretty tenacious person. I've never been unemployed for more than like two weeks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, yeah. Um, Can't sit still. Yeah. I, I definitely cannot. Um, so I moved here and I was, I, I had already scouted out some restaurants online. Actually, one of the ones that I had looked at uh, was Contigo. Yeah. And this was before they had opened. Okay. And they were talking to me about coming in as sous chef. Cool, yeah. And With, I, Did you know PJ at the time? Or? I didn't know anyone. Okay. I didn't yeah. know anyone, but I had sent my resume. Yeah. And I think they liked my resume. And um, I we were talking back and forth and like, well, we want to like have you come in and do like a stage and talk to you and like, you know, meet you in person. Yeah. And I was like, well, are you going to pay for like my flight and my <laughs> like a hotel or whatever? And they're like, no. And I'm like, well, then yeah. no, like, I'm not going to do that. Come for a stage. Like, yeah. Like it I, does sound comical. I mean, like it's common practice to stage, but like when you're coming from out of state, it's, it sounds kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll just fly out there. We'll do the stage. Right. I'll fly back. No problem. <laughs> like I don't have that kind of money right now. <laughs> right. Like if I, yeah, if it was a sure thing and it was just like a formality, then yeah. I would have been perfectly fine with so that. So the stage at Contigo never happened. Never happened. Uh -huh. But I, you know, I, I, I still communicated with them. And when I yeah. moved here, I came by like within the first few weeks and was just like, hey, like I'm me. Yeah. And they're like, well, nice to finally meet you. You know, when I, I, they weren't no hard feelings there. And I'm sure you can attest to this coming from a place like New York when you get out here. I mean, even just that interaction with Contigo, but like maybe everyone else, just little interactions. People mm -hmm. are so much, there's a more friendly nature oh, to yeah. people. Um, it's, and such, it's a much slower pace. Slower. And it's like, it must be the sun. Something, <laughs> something, you know, yeah. sunshine and everybody's <laughs> right. happy. Yeah. But slow down a little. Everyone New York. Walks, walks a lot slower. Right. New York, yeah. you, grim face, mug, you know, like it's. I guess so. I mean, I, I don't, I never really perceived that, I guess, because I grew up there. Yeah, yeah. So it's never been like a thing that I noticed. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm from Chicago. Yeah. And I'll notice this when I go back. Right. I instantly notice like the pale 
people, <laughs> and I noticed yeah. everybody looks a little on edge. Like, yes, you know, definitely. I feel like a little, gu- a little bit more of a guard up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And here, yeah. So, do you, but that's a good. I mean, Contigo. It's cool that you followed up with them. Yeah, yeah. And, and did you eat there? I did. I, I love Contigo. Contigo yeah. is a great restaurant. Great. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I had kind of scouted around. I looked at a bunch of places. Um, some of them, I did a couple of stages at a few places, uh, Vespaio being one of them, okay. Wink. Yeah. Um, and then. What did you think of Vespaio? Vespaio. I know it's crazy over there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Vespaio, the food was great. Right. I thought the food was pretty good. And what you see is good when you get it. They're. But the Kitchen back of the house is a mess. Is a mess. <laughs> like a well, they're torn... trying to do a lot in there, right? Uh, a little too much. Too no, they. That you know, they have two, right? The Anoteca and and the Vespaio. Okay, yeah. They share a kitchen right next to each other. They share a kitchen. Okay. And the, you know, they don't share a line, but they share a kitchen, and a yeah. lot of the stuff that they have on the menu is crossover. And the. It's got cr- people running next door. Oh yeah, and it's just a it's a tornado during <laughs> service. And I I stayed through a service, and kind of and worked the line, you know, just did like one or two things, kind of just you know see what was going on. Yeah. And it just seemed like I I couldn't really figure out how to fix it. Yeah. Like normally when I see that kind of thing where it's just like a tornado, there's like at least a few things I'll notice that'll be like, we can streamline this a lot better, or like this can be more. I just couldn't figure it out with the, the layout I, that they sure had. I'm pretty sure still like that. I think so. Yeah, their <laughs> their layout is just bad. Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. I know the chef there like recently bought Vespaio from the original oh. owner, so that's maybe uh, they'll. <laughs> man, who knows? Move some things around in the kitchen because it makes no sense. It's possible, right? <laughs> but Vespaio is one of the places. Wing. Yep. Where else did you stop? Um, and then I think what was the other one? I don't even know. Uh, I don't remember. But what'd you end up doing? So I ended up at a place called Bartlett's. Bartlett's, which, I've heard of. Yeah. Um, do you know Houston Restaurant Group? Hmm, no. So they're kind of like a up like a, a steakhouse type of feel. A oh. little so Bartlett's was formerly a Houston's, which is like a you know nicer like a I don't know how to explain, it, like a nice steakhouse. Sure. And they have like nice cocktails. It's very like um you it's very like kind of big portions and like very classic food. Okay. And they weren't doing anything too exciting there. Yeah. Um the food is really good and very high quality. Everything was made from scratch. Okay. But it was just like you go there and you get exactly what you ordered. Right. <laughs> like and that's fine. I thought the the training program there was amazing. Okay. Because they had me start out as a kitchen manager. Is that something that sparked that kind of desire to teach people maybe? Yeah, I think so. Or was I it mean, already there? Well, I think it's always been there. My whole family is a bunch of teachers. Hmm, so okay. I think it just kind of runs in the blood. Sure, sure. You know, to join the family business. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> On your own terms. <laughs> yes. But I think that... That training program, I was like, wow, this is an impressive training program. Uh, how come I've heard of Bartlett? Is it still here? Yeah, it's still here. It's oh, off okay. of Anderson. Okay. All yeah. Right. Okay, that would explain it. Yeah. All and right. a good restaurant. I mean, the, the they 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 take it very seriously and, you know, the food's good and the people that they treat their employees pretty well. Right. At, like their back of house, that their grill cook had been there for 20 something years. Oh, yeah, that's a good sign. Like, yeah. That's a good sign. The um, either they're complacent or they're doing something right at Bartlett's. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that, a little of both. Did you say kitchen? Do you training? Right, that's where you got kind of started training people there. Um, well, so I they had me come out as kitchen manager. Kitchen manager. And okay. the kitchen manager, in order to be a manager there in any capacity, you yeah. go through a pretty extensive training. Okay. And like you work every single station in in the entire kitchen. It's also good. Yeah, for yeah. like two or to like two or three weeks. Okay. So it's not just like oh you're at like, a shot, you know, like two two or three weeks on the line, at a time. two or three weeks. Yes. Okay. As, cool. as dishwasher, two or three weeks as dishwasher, two or three weeks as prep cook, two or it's three respectable. weeks. Respectable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I yeah. and I appreciated that because I was like I am not a good dishwasher. Right. And I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like, I can do it, you know, but I'm not like I, I hated it. Now, what makes you not a good <laughs> dishwasher? Is it that you get 
completely saturated in water uh, without <laughs> <laughs> like you can't get the flow where you don't get soaked or is it that you just like can't keep up with the pace or it's like all of the above i yeah. just <laughs> you're like, like soaked there's just still a pile literally of dirty dishes. i'm like sweating com- like completely sweating <laughs> like so red i turn red so quickly i'm like sweating i'm covered in water and so my hands get like yeah i have like my hands turn to like soft, like mashed potatoes. Yeah, and I know you. There's like <laughs> it's like a skill it's, where you yeah. get the guy at the end of the night who his hands aren't pruny and, and he's, he's totally dry and he's totally fine. He's good to go <laughs> he's, and he's yeah. just gonna go out. Just from gonna there. go home. Yeah, or, yeah or, gonna go out to get a beer. Whatever. And I'm a, I, yeah, when I if you spend an hour on dish and you're completely sore and beat yeah. up and you're nasty and you got chemicals all over yes, your body. That's exactly what I look like. I yeah. look like I went fully swimming. I can relate. Yeah. I can relate. But that's uh I don't know, it's pretty commendable that they send you to the Yeah, stations and, I, and like it that. was great. I think that was like a really, really important thing in my training life. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So cool. Um and then I know that we we met at Whole Foods. Yes. And is that what happened after Bartlett's? Um, no, I had, Yeah, I was only at Bartlett's for a year Okay. or a year and some. Anything interesting in between there and like Whole Foods? Yeah, so I worked at, at a, um, at a place called Cedar Springs Eating Disorder Treatment Facility. So I was working in a, a clinical like like eating when I think eating disorder I think anorexia bulimic. bulimia okay. binge binge eating wow that's um, an interesting there's a lot of other ones but those are the common this ones. more like um like a nursing home type facility uh, it was an outpatient facility okay I don't want to pet you anymore right now <laughs> <laughs> it was an outpatient facility um so we got uh, people who would come in it was it was a transition from people who were in um, in full intensive care where they were yeah. saying, you know, full time, this was an outpatient facility where they would come in for the day and leave in the evening. Right. It was supposed to be like a, the, that step between yeah, you yeah. just being on your own right? and, you know, like recovering, but providing food. three meals a day, three uh, meals a day still. Yeah. yeah and, but it's interesting when it's, when it's three meals a day for, uh, you know, I mean, yeah, eating disorders are hard to deal with. They're, yeah, yeah, I mean, because you <laughs> have a lot of dietary restrictions and a lot of, which is also where I kind of got. That's kind of where that my interest in like dietary restrictions came in. I I think that um, instead of it being a burden, you kind of yeah, of, like make food like delicious for people who can't eat everything. Right. <laughs> Plus, these people are coming up with excuses. And if oh, you make yeah. it good enough, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> and, and you can eat it, there's no dairy. <laughs> no, there's no nuts. Right. And it's delicious. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I also, you know, you can't take it personal when they don't eat the food. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That can be tough for people. You know? I mean, I, I knew that that would be a thing. Well, especially there, you kind of have a... Right. Yeah, yeah but like in other in other areas, you yes, know, somebody, yeah. somebody disapproves of your food. Yeah, they say it's it doesn't not, taste good or something. Yeah, that's not easy easy yeah. to swallow sometimes. But I really, really like that job. I would have stuck with that job for however long I would have loved to stay with it. And what, what happened? They got bought by another company. Oh, okay. And moved out to Bastrop. All right. And I was like, I'm not... Well, I'm not going there. And how do you feel now about Bass Drop compared to here? You still I'm still, still happy there. here? <laughs> yeah, I'm still okay. going. I would give it ten more years. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I still wouldn't want to work there. It's yeah. far. It's far. Yeah. yeah, it's far. And there was no incentive for me to go there. Sure, we're moving. We're moving. Shall yeah. we coming? <laughs> yeah. No. No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. There's no like incentive. No raise. No nothing. Like. But you kind of got introduced <laughs> through that to kind of the. Uh, is it Whole Foods? Then? Yeah, that was my next step. I because I was like, in, I was, that was my step out of my my step out of restaurants. Yeah, and the way that that I ended up there, I don't even remember. I kind of just started like, I I kind of got like burnt out at Bartlett's after a year, which was kind of lame because I was only there for a year. Right. But I was like, all right. But you had moved, and I mean, you yeah, did, I think it, it was my lot. first job when I had got here, and I was just like. This was it was taking over my whole life. I was working like seventy hours a week or something. Yeah, I mean, it, you can't like, you know, kick yourself for wanting to take a, a yeah, little yeah. leave. Yeah, and I was just kind of like, what else? What do I want to do? And I just started like applying to a bunch of things, and Whole I was foods. like, 
called yeah. back. Yeah, Whole Foods called back, and I was I I was pretty interested in le- leaving the restaurant world. Yeah, and doing something a little more so that organized. Sa- yeah, it started to sound appealing to yeah. you. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. All right. I like that because I I hear that a lot. Um, It's really sad when you see a chef who's still cooking and they hate it. They fucking hate it. They hate it and they always talk about it. Most of the cooks I know hate it. Right, right. But it's it's sad. I mean, like, it's especially when they're always for months on end talking about the next thing that's coming. Mm -hmm. And then you just, like I said, I emphasize months on end because it doesn't seem like it's coming. Right. And then when it does happen, I always like to do a little golf clap. I'm like, there you go. You got out of it. <laughs> you did it. On, yeah, onto something where you're not, you know, on your feet all day and you're yeah. hating your... But it doesn't happen to everybody. You know, no, it doesn't. I think there's some people who are built for it. And then I joke, it's <laughs> kind of like Shawshank Redemption. Because if you do it for too long, you don't know how to do anything it's else. It's true, though. It's, it's true. It's true. It's true. So I like that, uh, that you're, you know, you're here now, you've... The culinary career mm-hmm. led you to a point where you kind of identified that maybe maybe I'm not going to sit in the back of the house all day, you know, slaving away. Right. I, I don't know if that was the the ultimate uh, reasoning. You know, just well, you said seventy hour work. Yeah, weeks, I just wanted to have up. like friends and stuff. Yeah, a, a <laughs> like, life. Yeah, <laughs> right. All right, some free time. So. And Whole Foods of all places is great. Good for place that. to land. Yeah, it's a good place for it. So B Cave. Yeah. Is it always BK? Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Cool. Yeah. And then, well, I worked at the catering center. Oh. For while it existed. That's right. Yeah. That, and that was pretty short lived, right? Yeah. It was short lived. It was a but poor it was, decision on Whole Foods BF. To open it? Or, um, I mean, because. Not the, to open it, but to open it in such a hasty manner. Yeah. I think that they should have planned better yeah yeah because did you ever get a chance to go out there i did go there maybe once or twice but just to say hi to people yeah yeah it <laughs> was way too big it was huge <laughs> it's like a stadium so much, and the other half of it was completely vacant yeah yeah i remember the loading dock itself was huge yeah that's all you need was the loading dock it was so big yeah yeah um but then shortly after, Whole Foods was sold to Amazon. Yes. And, and, and I'm not sure what the demise of the catering place was. It was before the Amazon thing. Okay. But um, I don't know the ins and outs of why they closed the catering, but I'm guessing it just wasn't financially viable. It just, they were spending... Sure. It was a lot of overhead for what they were doing over there. Did you work with uh, Michael Wake? I did, yeah. Okay. He was on here. Yes, I saw that. Yeah. 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 He mentioned the catering place. Yeah. Yeah, he was. I, I liked working with him, and David Shea was over Super there too. Super cool guy, and, David Shea. Yeah. I, I talked to him about David. I, I, yeah, I'd love to get David out here too. He's over at uh, Arbor. Uh huh. Am I right? I think no, so. wait, no. What's the other one? Gateway. Yes, yes, you're Gateway. right. Yeah, and he just moved over to produce. I hung out with him like a couple like a, last week. Oh, cool. Yeah. The, and we've you talked bring, about bring him on. Talk about cocktails. He's into cocktails, the cocktails. mixology, and all yeah, that. Yeah, he's stuff. really into it. Very cool. We yeah. have had. A gentleman from the Peach Tortilla mm-hmm. to kind of talk about their guy there who does the cocktails. Yeah. Um, and he, like, for whatever reason, doesn't like consider himself a, a chef or mixologist. He just kind of like throws things together and, yeah. you know, they take pictures of them and put them on menus. So right. I don't, he should just call himself a mixologist. Yeah. But yeah, totally. Talk about stuff like that yeah. would be uh, like a different avenue to mm-hmm. go down. Yeah. But yeah, David was there. Uh, we've discussed a little bit how the Whole Foods, once you, get in with that like community right it's just there to stay it is i feel like I feel, there's a lot of people who i still keep in touch with who still, and how often do you go with. out and you'll run into them and, oh yeah and yeah. i mean i still shop there pretty you know somewhat me regularly too. That's, the, that's the go-to a lot of people go to central market i just don't have a central market near me yeah well uh, westgate's not that far but i it's, it's far enough where i can go to arbor trails. Of, yeah. yeah i just go to arbor trails yeah. and i come home that's yeah. it yeah, I mean, I like I like going to Whole Foods. I I think they they have the all the stuff around the perimeter is a higher quality. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, I, it's always been the case with me when I get into the guts of the store. I'm like, what the, f- what is this? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'll bring something home that's like three or four dollars more than it should be, and yeah. I'll be like. These were good, but they're gone. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Pamela's cookies, for instance. Instance. Uh, they're delicious, but there's like four in a pack for like yeah, seven. Yeah, it's, eight it's bucks. a lot of stuff like that where yeah. I'm like, okay. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Looks good. But yeah, it's great. Great. Whole Foods is great. Yeah. So Whole Foods, I mean, what what was your experience like? You like it? I like I was there for three years. Yeah. So I guess I liked it. Yeah, yeah. I think I I think the reason that I kind of left was it does once you get into because I was in the, like the supervisor role and like trying to get into that like ATL you know and team leader roles and stuff like that. Sure. It starts to get real, like you got to know people. Yeah. And so <laughs> mind you, we say the community's great, and we love you know we love have being been at Whole Foods, yeah. but yeah, there is something about climbing the ladder at Whole Foods that gets a little it gets weird. a little tumultuous. I yeah. feel like yeah, yeah. it's easy to get into like those mid level management roles. Yeah. But once you try to move up a little more, a little more. It's political, like, and it gets like yeah. you know, do they like me? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you, I, yeah, I remember all the mm-hmm. formalities, your due diligence, and all mm-hmm. that. Just gets a little, little, little over the top. Over the top. <laughs> yeah. There you go. That that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. And the the interview may go great, and you know, there's a in, you never know. right. And they do you like know. a panel interview for a job that's gonna give you like a dollar fifty more an hour. It's like <laughs> suck a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Very well said. Yeah. Very, that should be somewhere on like a, a T-shirt, like a yeah. whole. Food. <laughs> it's true though. It's yeah. true. I appreciate the effort, guys. But you know, like yeah. we should just have the standard a dollar fifty. <laughs> right. Just give me a dollar fifty. What's wrong point, with you? You please. can afford it. And you know, it's. I mean, not to harp, but a lot of times you get into these. You know, like when you become a supervisor, maybe you're just doing hot, you know, twice the amount of work. Right. And you, just for a little bit more. Just a little bit and more. And then it just like evens out after you get a bottle after right. work and you're like, I need to drown my sorrows. <laughs> right. <laughs> I just broke even. The, one of my favorite things is when I, I was working at the catering center. Yeah. And the, the holidays were not busy at the catering center. Okay. Because um, we pretty much had like all our catering orders in. And done because right. we didn't do like the smaller catering. We did like, you know, like yeah, like major, like you know, like hundred fifty plus type of stuff. Right, right. So all those like boxed catered dinners that people were getting for you know like four to like fifteen twenty people that the stores do. The stores are crazy around holiday time, as you know. Yeah. And they were like the catering center was like okay we need people to volunteer to go help out at the stores. Who wants, does anyone want to go bee cave? And I'm like, ooh, me. <laughs> I remember I showed up at, and had, and I, my, I thought I was just going to be doing prep. Like, well, they I'm, put you to work. Yeah, they, but they gave me a radio the minute I got there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're like, oh, you're back. At least it's back. There yeah, you go. They're like, here's a radio. You're yeah. doing this. Oh, <laughs> I'm yeah. like, okay. Oh, yeah. They, no, no, not wasting an asset there. <laughs> yeah. Not for a second. Yeah. I thought I was going to just chop carrots or something, yeah. <laughs> which I was perfectly content with doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what you're ready for. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, Whole Foods is great. Like, getting, being able to do stuff like that, how you can open stores. Yeah. It's a cool place. It's a great experience. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But you end up teaching, you mm-hmm. know. I mean, you leave there to to teach at a Scoffier, right? So this is actually funny. I'm totally going to shit talk this place right now. Okay. So That's, the, hey. <laughs> there was <laughs> there was a, so I left Whole Foods Catering yeah. to take a job at a place called Baby Greens. And Okay. They said, and they were. I was going to be their their like manager for their catering, sure, and or sous chef for the catering operation, which hadn't opened yet. Well, they lied. They lied. Well, so <laughs> <laughs> I I met the owner, and she was very kind, and and we had like a good talk, and I really liked her, and it was like a bunch of women working in the kitchen. I'm like, this is going to be great, like women, fuck yeah, yeah power, <laughs> yeah, and like, and then and then. The catering location was like a satellite location that was not connected to their like store <clears throat> front that also wasn't built yet. Yes. And did I run into you here at Baby Greens? No, no, no. no. I okay. was at Daggers. Okay, okay. So th- this is, right. the the Baby Greens is funny. Okay. <laughs> so I'm there. I show up and I'm like, okay, like, and it's like just like a big empty space with a with, there's like some equipment in there, but nothing's hooked up and. I'm like, okay, like what I'm not sure what you want me to do here. Yeah. Like it nothing's running yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, 
So, and I, I, I was like more than willing to do anything they wanted me to do. Even install the kitchen equipment. Sure. If, I was like, okay. I don't know what to do, but I'll read the thing and I'll right, try right. to figure it out. Right, <laughs> like, yeah. um, so I tried, I just basically spent a while like cleaning, just like they they had a big walk and that was disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. And I just was like, I'm going to clean this and then I'm going to clean You're some other stuff. Work, yeah, yeah. I'm just like, I'm going to clean stuff. Right, right. And that's what I, cause they weren't, they didn't really have like anything to do. So I'm like, what, you know, there's time to lean, there's time to clean. So I'm sure. like, okay, I'll just clean. Yeah. Um, and I cleaned the whole place and then I was like, okay, what's next? That took me like two or three days to clean the whole place by myself. And they were like, okay, well we want you to do some research on like what our catering menu is going to look like. And I was like, okay, kind of thought you had that already because yeah, yeah. you... And they're not calling you the chef. <laughs> no. They're, okay. they're just like... That's a chef's job. That, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I'm like, I thought you had a menu and that like I was just going to give like some input or like make specials or, you know, like yeah, yeah. what a sous chef does. <laughs> right, right. And they're like, oh, yeah, like we have some stuff in mind. and da, da, da. I'm like, okay, well, I just did some research and... I'm like, here's some stuff that looked good. I don't fucking know what you want. Right, right. <laughs> then I was there for literally a week, and they're like, this isn't working out. You're fired. And oh, the, <laughs> this is the only job I've ever been fired from, and it made no sense. They, they just, just were, like, not ready. So how successful today is Baby Greens? So it looks like they're, they, they opened up much later mm. than scheduled. Okay. Like months and months later than scheduled. But they're catering. I don't, I mean, I don't know about their catering. I saw, I know that they have their restaurant. It looks like, I don't really know. But I've not heard of it. Yeah. I You've mean, got me all interested. Yeah. I Poor communication and management. Sure. And sure. just like really, really led me on. And I like left Whole Foods for that because yeah. I was like, I'm going to be part of this like thing that we're going to start. Yeah. And Whole Foods, I mean, no, eat no children with you, right? No, I don't. But so I mean, like with the benefits, and oh, it's, yeah. it's a hard place to leave. Exactly. I mean, even if the money's not there, mm-hmm. sometimes it balances out because you've got really work good life benefits. balance and benefits. And yeah, stuff no, and I would be livid. Yeah, if I, were I was. In, I was. Yeah, and I tried to like call like Better Business Bureau and like you know like, <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah I'm see sure. if there was any sort of recourse for for sure. them just like hiring me and then a week later firing me. Right, right. And I'm like, I didn't do anything. Right. Literally, there was nothing to have done. <laughs> <laughs> anyway it's true right yeah <laughs> um, so you're like i cleaned very well i cleaned the whole place for you and then what you fired the me yeah they're like yes well that was that was your position we just didn't tell you <laughs> we just didn't tell you <laughs> um so but, i worked there for a week and then i was at daggers okay. and was daggers was great i like daggers okay. they just were like perpetually short-staffed yeah yeah and and they never it's made not an effort. Coming, right in Austin. Oh yeah, Just it's hard the, to find. It's hard to find people. Yeah, yeah. To find people. But you're currently raising. I mean, I don't know how. It was. So, you went to Escoffier mm-hmm. for a brief time, and we kind of touched on how you were doing some driving there, and then dr- tried to get into the teaching there. But now you've landed at Dell with the Culinary Arts. Yeah, Dell Valley. With, yeah. I'm, so how is the? I'm I'm like genuinely curious. Yeah. What it's like to teach. A a, ch- a child like ch- child. I mean, they're they're children. A kid, they're a kid children. Yeah. in high Teenagers, school. Teenagers, yeah. Teenager in yeah. high school. There you go. Sorry, mm-hmm. sorry to any any of the kids or ch- teenagers listening. Yeah, yeah. Whew. Jeez. <laughs> so, I teach the like upper level kids, so the juniors and seniors. Do, are these kids pushed in this class because they're like genuinely interested in culinary it's kind arts, of a mix. or is that part of it? So, the way that Texas works now is if schools have CTE programming, um, the the students will pick a coherent sequence. And that means if they're interested in pursuing automotive or um, medical art sciences or whatever, engineering or um, culinary, they take that for four years. Um, in high school? Mm-hmm. Oh, for the four years. Yeah. So can Sometimes they switch? They can, so once you reach like... Middle of sophomore year, you can't really switch anymore because you have to have taken the other classes in order to make it into that senior level class. Yeah. 
School is so funny because, like, it is. Uh, yeah, because like everybody makes they. I, they I can what change they on do. a dime yeah, right, right now. <laughs> like, yeah, and they make these kids decide when they're like in like eighth or ninth grade. Like, Sorry, what do you want to do with your life? Be a chef. Yeah, and it's like they don't know. Yeah, right. A lot of them are like, "Oh, you get to eat? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm into it." <laughs> yeah, right. like, you decided when you were a freshman you were going to be a chef, right? So from this point Gotta going forward, <laughs> we we have a slot for you at Baby Greens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you start tomorrow. <laughs> Bring your bring your sponge. <laughs> bring your sponge. <laughs> oh. You win the next day. <laughs> but these guys, uh, I see a lot of times when we talk about culinary school, yeah, which is different than what you're doing. Yes, but we hear about guys who watched an episode too many of Chops, ah. and they sign up. Sign me there. I'm going to be the next, um, next you know, Gordon, Gordon Ramsay, Gordon Ramsay, whatever. Ramsay rock yeah, star. Yeah. <laughs> you know, with their, his steel and his knife, which right. is like. So, what there do, is, uh, do you got? Do you take an effort to like steer people to like say, you got to want to do this? Yeah. So I think that there are a handful of students that are genuinely interested in pursuing this as a career. I'm sure you see a lot, like because we have a different. When you and I probably were growing up, it wasn't as common for it to be in the home. Like we didn't have chopped. Yeah, you know, I mean, now like when there you're were five some years old, you might shows. be growing up with like chopped on. Yeah, right, right. But now it's like everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, it's everywhere. It's yeah. it's glamorized. Yeah, and it's it's for good reason, and also at the same right. time, it's it's not an easy job. Right, and I it's mean, it's giving people a, a the wrong idea. It, when you see Gordon Ramsay. And he's you know throwing where plates he, and they cursing and yelling and okay <laughs> maybe he's a bad example but when you just see like a established chef who's you know you know he's in a suit right and, you know everything's easy yes that is not how he got there no it took a long time right. to get there he's got blisters he's got blisters <laughs> he's got scars he's you know worked eighty ninety hour weeks he's yeah it's it was not a easy road yeah I mean I think. I make an effort for the students that are there. I kind of feel them out a little bit in the beginning of the year. I mean, I've only been doing this for like a year and a half, right. so I can't like speak to. Sure, sure, the, sure. You know, but my thought is like kind of feel out the kids and see if there are some that are genuinely interested and 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 you know pursue them differently than I would for the students that are just in it because they. Maybe Signed just up. want, yeah, or yeah. they maybe just want to learn some life skills. And maybe they're not interested in doing this as a job, but it's still something that they might be interested in. And and on the same note, you've got these are high school students. I mean, yeah, I mean, when you're in high school, I right? Mean, come on, a lot of people are joking around still. Yeah, yeah. Playing. Oh you know. yeah, and I think that a lot of the kids that that go to the school um, <clears throat> that I work at, a lot of them are not going to go to college, and that's totally fine. A lot of them are not going to go to trade school even because it's expensive or they don't, you know, they don't have the ability to. All right. But if they have at least a skill that they can, you know, like present on a resume, like, and they can get a job, that that that's better than nothing. For the students you're te- teaching, it's like a shoe in for someone to become successful without trade school, exactly. without any college. You teach them the fundamentals of culinary arts. And then you send them on to one of these upcoming restaurants in Austin. I mean, it is a very unique time for someone like that, you know. And I think that there's like, it's it's so part of it is like I'm. There's some students that I'm like super impressed with, and I'm like, wow, like look at them go. And then there's a handful of kids where I'm like, oh my god, they don't know how to open a goddamn can. (laughs) And (laughs) has anybody done anything, uh, uh, you know, noteworthy of? Any any uh, anybody taking like an oven knob and like burned it in the microwave or there's a lot of I can't even <laughs> really it's hard to think of how many silly things that they've done. <laughs> okay, okay. But um okay, here's a good example. Sure. <laughs> um we bought the garlic, the peeled garlic, that you was, know, in the big tub. Get me one of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And because we did, so at the school, we, we run a restaurant okay, and cool. that serves the teachers and faculty 
and we usually run it twice a week. Yeah. And it's got like a menu and there's the we have like servers and everything. It's it's really cute and it's a really the kids love it. That's great. Yeah, yeah it's great. It, it brings in money for our department and they get experience and Sure, sure. We feed the staff and it's kind of a food desert out there, so it's nice for the faculty to have something to eat that's not Sonic. Nice. <laughs> and, I mean, um, I'd be happy with Sonic, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> whatever. Not all the time, though. You know, <laughs> you gotta spice it up a yeah. little bit. So we 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 do that. Where was I going with this? I forgot what I was saying. Um, no, well, you, you've got the the restaurant. What was your first question, though? The first question I was talking about <laughs> kids who are into it or not into it. Oh, but then we were talking about. Something that they did that was really stupid. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was talking about burning oven or <laughs> my example was taking a oven knob, knob and burning it in a microwave. <laughs> and you were like, oh, ding, ding. No. Ah, so the garlic. Yes. <laughs> okay, garlic. Yeah. The, the tub of garlic. So, you know, we have the garlic bulbs that we use <laughs> and we do. We were roasting those whole, you yeah, know, yeah. and then but like those cut in half. Roast yeah. Whole. Yeah. Yeah. And then we we also have, like, the garlic that we just chop or put it in stuff, you know. Sure. And I had – and the, the the garlic with the peel on it was staying with the onions in dry storage. The garlic – the peeled garlic had to stay in the fridge. And they just couldn't get it. They just didn't get it. The, the two garlics had to be in two different places. And <laughs> <laughs> I kept telling them, like, you got to put the garlic back. The garlic is still in dry storage. Who's going to put it back? So I'm going to put it back. So they're and putting the container Into back dry storage, the, yeah. It, and I'm yeah. like, you can't do that because that needs to be in the fridge. Right, right. Because it's peeled already and you can't have it out here. Yeah. It's, and it's silly how that's common sense to, like, when you've been in the kitchen for a minute. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a lot of stuff like that where and that's new for me, too, that I, like... Yeah. Assume people know, well, yeah, but they you just gotta don't. You got to get to like an elementary level. <laughs> yeah, right? they really do. Yeah, right? and a lot of kids like they. Some of them haven't like seen a lot of things. Like I had, um, like red cabbage, and I was like, <laughs> they were gonna make some coleslaw, and I was gonna have them work on their knife skills. Right, I'm like yeah. we'll make some coleslaw, and I was like, okay, you know, grab the red cabbage, and they're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> They didn't know what red cabbage was, you know. Yeah. It's it's kind of crazy to me that, but you know, you, you can't make them feel bad about it. You, you just gotta them. show them. You, <laughs> yeah. show, you showed them. <laughs> this is red cabbage. Right, Eat right. some. <laughs> so what? Um, what? What do you take from it now? Like when you go home at the end of the night, you've gotten yourself out of the situation of being stuck in a kitchen, mm-hmm. which is probably better. Yeah. I mean, if that's not what you want to grow old doing, right. And when you go home after teaching these students, is there something that kind of like, you know, resonates with you a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I I think that more than anything else, I know I'm, it's supposed to be like career centered, but I'm more thinking of this as life skills. And I am teaching them stuff that they need to know for a career, but they really need to know how to feed themselves. And I think it, and, and, and nutrition, basic nutrition. That, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> the feeding themselves. Right? Yeah. yeah. Especially if you're going to go to college or, you know, a lot of, a lot of kids, you know, unfortunately or whatever, will probably have kids <laughs> before they should. Sure. Sure. So you got to know how to feed a family on a budget and, so let I me think. let me tell you because what you're saying is 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 pretty cool because I know I have teachers and and I don't know if you can you know put yourself out there to like the big picture yeah I'm sure you have a teacher that you remember yeah like clear as day Miss Miss Sterling first grade yeah. you know I have a number of them I had a, yeah yeah Mr I Garrison have a handful. right so you're the teacher right now that this is you're obviously going to make this impression on someone and they'll be 35 and they'll be like. Chef Alicia taught me this. Yeah. The fucking macaroni in the oven. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever it is. But, like, they're not, just say they're not in the kitchen and they haven't taken off. You know, they're remembering something that's with them. Yeah. And they're carrying on to their family. Right, and right. Even if it's just a simple, yeah. si- you know, whatever right. whatever it is. And that's, I mean, like. Do you ever think, does that ever, like, enter your head and you're like, this has got to be epic. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, not not really. I mean, I'm never Just like doing it. Yeah, I'm never like they better remember me. <laughs> like, 
But it, it was actually kind of funny you say that. Cause it, so tomorrow is the last day of school. Oh, because you, you said, so I thought school was out. Austin ISD is out, but we're not out. Okay. I left right. work a little early because I had my conference period at the end of the day, So I was, and it was finals week, and I'm already packed up. So. Sure, sure. Cool. But um, I went and I had to clean out my mailbox, and there was a little note that one of my kids left me. It was so cute. She left me a note today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's like, your class is my favorite. Like. Sure, sure. I learned so much. I'm like, you know, that that's like that's really nice. Like that, you know, definitely that stuff feels really good. I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure. That's cool. So you're gonna stick around with the I mean Yeah, I mean, as long as so my, my partner Alex is in school and you know, working, so I'm kinda waiting for him to get he, his his degree he, and once we have a little more money, I think we are not gonna stay in Austin forever. Oh, but okay. So you guys might re- relocate? Uh, more than likely, yes, but not oh. within the next two years. What's his line of work? He is um, he tutors, so okay. um, he tutors in a bunch of stuff at okay. uh, ACC, and he's in school at Texas State. So, but what about the teaching? Like, is that something that you think you're going to stick with? Yeah, I okay. think so. I mean, I got I went and got my teaching license and stuff. Like, I had to go through I had to take take like a class and take a test and all that, and which sure. was not that hard, but. You know, I had to do it and pay for it and stuff. So I'm, and I'm happy here. And I mean, I think that this is the seat, like career and technical education, and specifically culinary arts is growing. Yeah. So even if I move to another city, there's probably going to be somewhere where they need a culinary teacher. It's hard to find culinary teachers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, so let's take yourself out of like, um, you know, the head of the you know, the role of the teacher and Mm -hmm. just like when you kind of like, I'm sure there's moments where you sit there and you look at these kids and you're kind of thinking about where are you going to go in your life? Where are you going to go in your life? Yeah. Where are you going to go? Is there anything for the one that you identify that may possibly become a chef that turns into a surgeon? Like (laughs) your, your instincts are wrong, but maybe you're, what's the advice You've gone through your career and it's led you to where you are. But, like, just take yourself out of, like, where you are now. What do you tell them? Like, what's your I advice think it's for like, them? I think that I would say work hard while you can. And by that I mean while you're young. Yeah, yeah. And, like, put, put the time and effort in. Because now... When you're young, yeah, because it's not coming. Those those days, those right, because you can't really do that. (laughs) You can't really work that much when you're. I mean, you can, but it's harder to to have that lifestyle. Yeah, Yeah. it's harder to have that lifestyle when you get older and have you know like you know maybe you have a relationship or kids or a mortgage to pay or whatever. It's better to put the work in now so that you can there's so a it's payoff crunch time. yeah it's crunch time yeah. that's that's what Do i it. yeah yeah it's not time to take a you know take off <laughs> right yeah, yeah i think it's time to put the work in and and just get that get that part done with yeah yeah so that you can move on yeah that's probably pretty good advice for because that's a common theme like i mentioned that we'll get these guys who come in they've watched chop too many times and they're in culinary right. school actually paying for it and they're you know, ready to become the next big thing. But like, it's important to know that you're young, you're ready to go. You got to put in the work to do that. And what you're saying is these guys are young enough to be able to do it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not saying like work yourself to death and, or, you know, like make yourself like start doing cocaine all the time or anything like that. But But you're, you have the ability to like, be awake longer. <laughs> right. 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 Like you have the stamina, the ability, right. like, yeah, to, to get that, to get those, those hours in kind of. Sure. Sure. And, you know, I think there should be a, a higher standard for the way we treat people in this industry. We're, yeah. But, I think we're headed towards that. Yeah. But I think that like, even as that happens, there's still the expectation that you work hard when you're young. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean the the industry's changing. Um, we've debated: is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Because like it shaped you, mm-hmm. you know, to you know feel like you were the badass in the back of the house. Right, right. You know, it shaped <laughs> you to who you were. So if we turn this industry into this very pampered, take a break lifestyle, will we still get get great talent? Right. Uh, it's a you know the balls in discipline. the air. It's a discipline. Yeah. It's a discipline. Um, I'm sure. Yeah. With everything, it'll work itself right. out. Yeah. 
I think there's a balance between it being like a very disciplined, regimented and like structured thing and it being something where we can like treat people like people. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> give them vacations and pay Get, them for them. Yeah. <laughs> well said. I yeah. mean, vacations, I mean, people, they don't get, you get, it's like the, you get looked at so weird when you're taking a day off. Yeah. You're like, oh, I'm taking two days off in a row. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. On a weekend. What? Have you heard of that one? That's how, that's how you get fired. <laughs> <laughs> but, but things are good. Yeah. 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 I'm happy there. I mean, the school's going through like, some, you know, some ups and downs lately, but. I haven't really felt too much of that burden, so I'm happy. (laughs) When's Alex going to finish up school? Hopefully um, this fall semester. We're going to see you sticking around here? Sorry? You're going to stick around here for a little bit? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I mean, until, like, we... we, uh, Moving is so expensive, and we don't really have a solid plan, and I can't really do, like, what I did when I was younger anymore, just move without a job. Yeah, Yeah, I have to, like... Let's go! Yeah, got, you know, like, a bunch of animals, and... Yeah, yeah. We can't not have jobs, so... Right, If we do move anywhere, I'll have to, you know, scout it out long before. Sure, Yeah, so I would say at least another two years. Well, good. Good. Well, this is cool. Thank yeah. you for coming in. This was this was nice. Well, good. Yeah, good. that's. I, I'm I'm hoping that right. Yeah, I like. I mean, it's like, I feel like it's like, kind of funny to just like talk about myself for like, yeah. like an hour. Yeah, but it's, but it's it is it's a little like you said, it's a little cathartic and, yeah. Yeah. especially now, like at the end of the school year, like kind of reflecting on my career totally. and totally, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I appreciate it. Oh yeah, <laughs> and you are the first culinary arts teacher so there you go (laughs) that's awesome you need to come back especially don't just leave when alex gets his stuff in order and you guys are yeah don't go come back sure talk about stuff so and hopefully what will happen is you'll get some of these students who do go on Mm -hmm. and you know start something cool um, it, what would be even more cool is if they don't end up in culinary school and they take what they learn from you and they're you know out there right. in the field. Yeah. Just do their thing. Yeah, yeah. And maybe you can report some of those stories. Who knows? Yeah, that'd be great. Or the polar opposite. I don't know what's going <laughs> to <laughs> Just kidding. But yeah. thank you for coming in. Yeah, thank you. All right. Chef Alicia. Well,